everyone. I'm Sushmita Sharma and you're most welcome to join Pepper Magazine's Aspiring Australian Women series. We are in conversation with Michaela Hosking and she has recently finished her bachelor's in naturopathy and she's beginning her career now. We are very excited to chat with Michaela. Michaela, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. So would you like to tell us about um, your experience in naturopathy and how did you decide to begin your career in naturopathy? It sounds kind of stupid, but <laughs> I just read a book where they were using like natural remedies in a more more emergency healing situation. That's not applicable so much to today, but I found it really interesting and I was like, hey, I want to know that. Um, and so I just did it. That's wonderful. So do you like it now? Are there any challenges that you've faced or anything that makes you wake up every morning and just go to work? I mean, the only real challenge is probably having to learn how to learn by myself. Like coming from high school, you kind of get homework and all of that stuff. Not dissimilar with uni, but you do have to take control of your time and your mission a lot more. Um, so that was something that I had to learn a little bit more how to do. Uh, stuff like research. Um, yeah. And just... Being a motivator for myself, basically. And what exactly motivates you? I don't think I have like a specific goal in mind, but just the idea of where I want to be or what I want to do when I grow up, per se. But you know, <laughs> something that I've pictured in my head, but it's kind of constantly changing. But yeah, that, that is the goal that I kind of work towards. Of course, well, change is a part of life. So do you still think that you're still learning as um, you go to work and you meet other people? Yeah, you always kind of pick up something new. Like even in a podcast that I would listen to, if I listened to it again, I'd pick up something else that I might have just not quite seen it this first time. Um, so you're always learning something new and then you can't know everything. So there's always going to be a learning opportunity with every new client or every new person that you talk to. Definitely, there's, there's no limit to knowledge. What would you say you're most passionate about in life? In life? Oh, oh that's tricky. So many things. Um, but probably most just like foundational health in terms of doing, you know, exercise for your mental health and your physical well-being, eating properly and like just food education in general. Like not a lot of people know what a healthy meal or a healthy diet looks like. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be hard, but they just too much information. They don't know how to make it attainable for themselves. That kind of thing. I think I want to focus mostly on that. And what's a healthy diet for you? It's a bit different for everyone, but for me, it's probably mostly whole foods. Um, kind of like the 80-20 rule in terms of treats and junk food. <laughs> Um, but yeah, mostly whole foods. I don't really eat a lot of meat. Um, I just don't like that. But other people do plenty fine on lots of meat. And do you see yourself running a business in this field? Or do you always just want to keep working? I do want to run a business at some stage. Probably just kind of just me. But I, I do like working in other environments as well. So working in a health food store or something like that, as well as doing a business where I run consults and have patients. I think that would be easier for me, um, management-wise at least. And are there any challenges you think that would be challenging for you and how do you overcome those? Well, it's not quite set up fully yet and the challenging part is knowing how, how to set it up, really. That is a learning curve and then the next most challenging part that I think I will come into is finding clients you have to expose yourself in certain areas to get the right people and then may maybe those clients don't work for you in terms of you like don't work well together which is another problem that you can have um and yeah and it's it's probably going to be a challenge forever but that's okay I'm willing to learn how I can bring in the right people into my Do you have any motto that you would like to share with our readers um, overcoming those challenges or any motto in practicing naturopathy? I don't think that I necessarily have a motto. 
or do you feel the need of it? Like if there, if you, if you don't have any moto at work, do you, do you feel that a person needs a moto or should it be just learning while you're practicing? I don't think you necessarily need a moto. Yeah, basically like the first rule of, of naturopathic medicine and allopathic medicine would be like first do no harm. So that's one of the rules that you can pretty much apply across your whole life <laughs> if you can. And then the other one that I like to live by as much as possible is um, food as medicine, which again relates to that foundational health. And then other than that, it's just, you know, being clear about who you are and making goals that get you where you want to go. That's, that's beautifully put. Um, so speaking of goals, who, who inspires you the most in life? I got lots of different interests. So there's like certain people that inspire different parts of my life, but business-wise and, and certainly naturopathy-wise, there is a clinician called Catherine Maslin who works in Brisbane. She's, you know, a boss bitch lady. <laughs> Excuse my language, but she's really got it figured out. Like she's got her very, very, very busy clinic and she also has like a podcast where she is super engaging with all of her patients and certainly lots of other people outside of that. But yeah, she's just constantly on the go to learn more and do more and be more. That's good. So what would you say that, like what's success for you? What, how would you define success? And what would you say that, like, or when would you say that you have achieved success in life? That really depends on your mindset. I think success comes from being happy with what you're doing, mostly. <laughs> Certainly there's other things like being content with the way that you live your life, the job that you have, other things like that. But really, that yeah, that's about it. Success would be me, I don't know, as I envision my future, um, being in a good place, having a good balance. I'm not happy then it's, it's, it doesn't mean anything. And how do you keep track of your progress while you're on your way to achieve that success? Are there any actionable plans that you follow? Once you've opened the business, there's the first hurdle. Um, I don't know. You, there's different ways to measure progress. Obviously, in a business, there would be financial and, and all of that sort of thing. It's probably how I would measure my, my progress in that way. But then there's also that I would be learning literally forever. So I don't think progress comes to a stop in that way either. It's just moving forward. I see that you pay a lot of importance and attention to how much and how you're learning. Do you want to tell us how you've learned how to run a business or anything that that stood out in your journey as a naturopathy professional? I mean, we do, at the end of our degree, we do a significant portion of student-run clinic work. So we go in and we see clients and we get supervised by our lecturers. So there's a lot of... You do learn some of the business side of that and some of the client work, which is really nice. Um, makes you feel a bit more stable and capable. I've got lots of people in my life that either run businesses or, you know, have some sort of aspirations around building their career or something like that, which I pick up little things from. Well, you know, recently I was actually listening to a podcast too, and um, it spoke about how people see business as, as such a frightful thing to do. And uh, like you need a lot of preparation and investment to start a business and run a business. But um the person who was speaking said that it's really not something that anybody can't do. Um, so do you believe in that? Like anybody can just run business and you don't really need a lot of business mind in it. I guess it depends how prepared you feel. I like to feel prepared at least, but I don't you know, scare myself when I can't think of how to come across that hurdle or whichever it is. Yeah, I guess you don't really need too much preparation, just the right people around you and a bit of determination. Um, I'm going to ask you a very particular interview question now. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? It changes all the time, but hopefully I will have a clinic that I work in, at least part-time, with some, you know, a lot of clients coming in and out, all that sort of thing. 
means I will be 34. Um, yeah, I don't really know what the other side of it is yet. I'm just seeing what the opportunities that I come across are and taking the ones that I think will help me progress to my future goal of having a clinic and then whatever else appears on the side. Well, I'm sure you'll be a great Hepburn woman in 10 years from now. So tell me about naturopathy. Um, how has your experience been and how do you, how do you implement naturopathy practices in, in your daily life? I read someone's Instagram post the other day and they said that doing a degree in naturopathy, the person that you started at as when you entered that degree to the person that you are when you come out is so different <laughs> like because you're learning little bits over time you kind of can change your lifestyle and how you do things as you're learning them so by the time that you're finished you changed all of these things and it seems like a lot but it's little things that build up on each other are there any ways in which you implement naturopathy in your daily life like if you have a hay fever or anything like what do you do or for stress relieving? I think stress and anxieties are quite challenging for today's world, especially in COVID-19 times. So how would you say naturopathy helps in such times? Well, since naturopathy basically is like a holistic, not therapy, but treatment plan per se, it does involve or it can involve a lot of different things. So if I had a patient that was dealing with stress and anxiety, and I do occasionally do this myself, <laughs> Um, I might like suggest meditation or I call it my stress less tea, but it's just a mix of like sedative slash uh, relaxing herbs, which really helps. Stuff like that, just things, they seem so simple, but when you do them regularly, they make a massive difference. So like going for a walk out of nature, drinking the right amount of water, not drinking five cups of coffee a day, <laughs> that sort of thing. That's a challenging one to use, but yes, definitely the one to try. <laughs> so is there any specific kind of meditation? Because I'm aware that there are too many different kinds of meditation for different kinds of purposes that you're looking for. So especially for stress and anxiety in business, is there any, any specific kind of meditation or like breathing exercise or anything that a Hepburn woman could follow? It really depends what works for you. Like I can't, I can give you a lot of options, but I can't say, yes, this one exactly will work for you. There are certainly breathing techniques that work for a lot of people, like, you know, breathing in for seven, holding it for three and then breathing out for seven or something like that, which is changes the chemistry in your body so that you feel calm. But meditation wise, there's like guided meditations that you might prefer, or you could just prefer to listen to, I'll call it yoga music, I don't have a better describer, <laughs> but something like that. Or you might just prefer a, a more simple meditation that helps you connect your body like yoga or exercise or walk or reading. And do you practice all these in your real life and have they helped you? Meditation is something I haven't yet learnt to be good at. It does take quite a while, but I certainly like use exercise as a form of my meditation because it's you you just don't think when you're doing something that you need to focus on with your whole body you're not really thinking about all of your problems <laughs> it gives your mind a little break but other things like that like oh, the breathing technique techniques sorry i use that sometimes before bed when i feel like i can't sleep or i'm still hyped up from the day that one's really quite easy to use okay so that's really great. And right. So how would you describe your typical day at work? Um, when you're working, like what's your, what does your day look like? So since it is more of a retail based business at this point in time, it's a lot of answering clients, not clients, customers questions about products. So if they come in asking about symptom or something that they have directing them to the right sort of area based on your knowledge and, and what they tell you it's, it's kind of like a consult really but a super super fast one yeah you do miss a lot of information but if you know what questions to ask definitely can help them out all right so that's great Michaela do you have any last thoughts for our viewers any uh suggestions that you would like to give them basically kind of 
what I've been talking about, the, the key, just like I said, that meditation takes time to practice and time to, to get into the habit of um, that kind of determination applied to your whole life in terms of both health and starting a business is hard and you will face challenges, but you really need to build skills of determination and, and uh, even discipline, I say, um, to help you get where you want to go. I see them as muscles. So the more that you work them, the better that they function. Well, on that note, I would like to um, end this interview and just suggest our viewers that stay determined in whatever you want to achieve and success will be yours one day. It was great talking to you, Michaela. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Shashira. Bye, everyone.